Hello everyone, we will talk about to improve the UX of an industrial robot. We will speak about our ambition, then I will tell a little bit about ourselves, and we will explain what the developer does and what the UX designer does. To finish, we will show you how we merge our work. So our ambition is to de democratize the industrial robotic domain. And for that purpose, we developed a software called Chameleon that allows programming many brands of robots, many brands of devices like sensor, PLC or Gripper. So now let me tell you about ourselves. I am Florian Dordain, I'm founder of Tesseract Solution. Before Tesseract, I was in charge of robotic project for a logistic group and I figured it out that it's very complicated to manage many brands of robots, many brands of devices. So in 2017, I founded Tesseract Solution to solve this issue. Hello, so I am Maxime Boutrouille. I'm a psychologist and doctoral researcher in psychology and human factor UX at Tesseract Solutions with the support of a French psychology laboratory, the CRPCPO. So I am writing a thesis on the acceptability of our software in order to improve the UX. I'm so excited to present you how we solved the challenges with QT and QT Design Studio and talk to you about our collaboration with Florian. I just want to say that I'm not only talking to UX designers, but also to all product and innovation designers and also to all of those who like me, are curious and want to learn about the possible collaboration between an engineer and a UX designer. So now, how do we use QT framework? So yes, how to create a communication between QT application and the device, like robot or sensor or PLC. QT framework have several protocols like Modbus, OPC UA, TCP IP and remote object. The usage is easier than the common C++ usage. As you know, C++ have, uh, for example, TCP socket, but it's very complicated to use it. And in the framework, some checking, some debugging is already done so your code is more stable if you use a qt framework so we use qt framework for many uh, applications for example to create the communication between the tablet and the control center we use the q remote object to manage the control center from tablet the control center publish data through OPC UA and the control center can communicate with PLC and sensor through Q Modbus and the control center is able to establish a communication between the robot and itself through QTCP socket. So now I will do a um, focus on Q remote object because Q remote object is very powerful to develop a remote interface. You are able to manage some function through Q remote object from another devices. So you are able to manage a device from another devices. So it's very helpful to create a remote interface. So how does it work? On the main process, in the main process, there is a source object and in the other process, there is a replica object. The replica object is kind of copy of source object. And through replica object, you are able to manage some function from source object. At the moment, we spoke about the code. We spoke about the communication between devices, robot, PLC, 
and control center. But now how to create a user interface interface to manage this code. So now I let Maxim speak about his work. Okay, so as Florian says, when it comes to software, the question of UI arises. So how to make the interface pleasant, easy to use and intuitive? Our goal was to bring agility, friendliness, customization, and of course, satisfaction to our software. In this part, we are going to speak about UX design and Qt Design Studio. As you know, our software is a robotics software. So we can ask ourselves another question. How can we make our software and also robots be accepted in factories? Uh, I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of user-centered design? As you know, it's a wonderful and iterative methodology that covers the whole UX design process from understanding the user's needs to creating a prototype to evaluating the prototype, to implementing the product. With Qt, in my case, Qt Design Studio, I was able to develop functional and dynamic UI prototype in the most complete way possible. And as I told you, this step is necessary in UX design. For the prototype part, with Qt's unique interface, you can bring your ideas and the user's ideas to life. This methodology of user-centered design allows users to be involved in the design process, in the design of the software, in their human-robot interface, and in their relationship with the robot. But it is difficult to have users available in smart factories in France. For example, many researchers in France have difficulties just having answers to a survey for operators in industries, especially during this health crisis. But in Tesseract Solutions, we worked hard to get the maximum feedbacks from users by going to factories and offering them a software adapted to their work. Anyway, I, I have presented Qt Design Studio to researchers in a laboratory because research in France is not adapted enough to this kind of tools. I think that Qt Design Studio is very interesting for all of those who, like me, are doctoral researchers or are employed and have to make an interface. The benefit of Qt is that you can directly modify your UI prototype with the user. The software allows you to quickly model the changes the end user wants. He wants a button for additional interaction with the UI, okay? You can add the button let him place it on the UI. A sidebar, okay. As you can see, there is many possibilities to create your unique user interface with the end user. You can create animation in a few clicks to bring your interface to life. For example, we had created a widget with eyes that change according to the user's interaction with the software. If the, for example, if the user made positive interaction, the eyes would be happy. But if they made a negative interaction, the eyes would be doubtful. But the users didn't like that. They thought it was childish. So what would have been the point of keeping this feature? We simply removed it. It didn't take much time to produce it in Qt Design Studio and test it with user. So it didn't matter because who is not more specialized in what they had, remove or modify in your UI than the end user? And who will be potentially satisfied in the end? It is your target. This is how to create a good UX and how to improve the acceptability of robots in industries with softwares that make it easy to set up robots, with softwares designed by and for users, and with software that cares about end user satisfaction. So Qt Design Studio, with its practical interface for UX designers, gives the opportunity to make simple and complex prototypes. 
and these prototypes can easily be evaluated by users and improve your software. So now I'm going to show you the evolution of our UI. As you can see, our first UI wasn't very sexy, but it was the beginning. This interface was simple with a color coded system for the start and stop buttons, uh, but the interface lacked visuals, some elements were not highlighted enough, and the, the software was not interactive enough. The user could quickly feel passive in his work activity. So weeks after, we worked hard with Florian to improve the software before presenting it to the users. So we organized beta tests and got feedback from beta testers in order to improve the software. So I made sketches. My first sketch was just a representation of the current interface. Redrawing the interface allows you to take a step back, get some perspective and say, okay, this is my current UI. What can I do to improve it? So I made sketches uh, and for this, I use the Remarkable 2 tablet, but you can also use tablet like the iPad Pro or computer software. So I made a series of sketches to find a nice, uh, easy to use and usable interface. And none of them was really satisfactory. Finally, we decided that uh, this last design could be interesting. It's an interface with a block design that reminds the programmation interface of the software. So we discussed it with uh, Florian and made a first model to have a concrete visual. Then I immediately modeled this prototype on Qt Design Studio. You can make pieces of interfaces and these interface pieces can be assembled to make your UI. This is a very simple and convenient because it avoids having to do the same thing again and again. So you can start, start again, try, fail, try again and modify your UI at will. You can also make UI with interactive icons, text, uh, mouse areas, and all other elements you choose by simply making connections between those targets. So from the first sketch, you can go to Qt Design Studio and you can architect a real prototype. So yeah, all the buttons were not functional, but the goal was to have a working prototype on the major features. So it's okay. So this interface was good. As you can see, it's better, but not sufficient enough. Something was missing. And we had a dev and dev solution that allowed us to change a lot about the interactivity of our software. And now, how we merge our work, how to mix the UX designer work and developer work. For that purpose, the docking system is very powerful because I am able to retrieve the Maxim's work using docking system and Qt declarative view. In order to make our software accepted, we made several prototypes. None of them was really satisfactory. So we rethought our way of seeing the software and we imagine a UI that would be totally modulable by the user. And the advanced docking system is the best idea we've ever had on the UI. Thanks to this, the user can move, modify, and re-modify their interface as they wish. This is an interesting contribution to the acceptability of the software because it brings a lot to the customization of the UI. The user can save their UI configuration, restore the default positioning. So I can ask user, what do you want in your UI with a sort card system? User can therefore decide on the software's widget. Then all you have to do is brainstorm with the engineer, with Florian, to find out if all the requests are feasible, make the widget on Qt Design Studio, and give the widgets to the engineer, to Florian, to integrate them into the software. Furthermore, I don't know how to code very well. 
but I can send my work to Florian without any worry because all the actions I perform on Qt Design Studio become computer code and the QML language of Qt Design Studio is extremely easy to transfer to Florian with Qt so he can implement it in the final version of the software. It allows a better collaboration between dev and dev. It is therefore an ergonomic practical interface which allows customization and consequently improves the acceptability of the software. And now I will show you the result. So I am able to move or resize the, the scene. So here I'm able to resize the widgets. I am able to move the widgets. I'm able to close some widgets and I'm able to share widgets between the window. Okay, so I'm able to resize it. Okay, and now I'm able to visualize the 3D scene from operator user interface. I'm able to keep my 3D scene on the programming interface. Here I add some link to documentation template of code and I paste a template of code to use QML file in widgets. So please feel free to contact us if you would like to get some template of code or to get more information about our usage of Qt framework. Please, if you have any question, post your question on the chat.